video, we are going to discuss the third question of the series, which is how two computers talk when they are in different network. I would like to tell you here is that understanding of my last video is required for better clarity of this video. So if you haven't checked my last video, please have a look at it first. Now let's answer the question and whiteboard the various concepts associated with it. Okay, consider this diagram. Once again, for now, don't bother about these empty boxes here, here, and tables as we will be filling them during this video. Here we have a router, this one. And by definition, a router connects various networks. For this example, we have two network, network 192.168.10.0/24 is connected to 0/1 interface and network 192.168.20.0/24 is connected to 0/2 interface of this router. The job of the router is to switch packets between networks, right? Each network has a single switch. For example, left hand side network has switch one that is connected to host A and right hand side network, this one has switch two, which is connected to host B. Of course, the two switches are also connected to this router, okay? Host A has IP address 192.168.10.10/24 and its MAC address is A colon A colon A. Host B's IP address is 192.168.20.20 slash 24 and its MAC address is B colon B colon B. One important thing to note here is that as this router is a layer 3 device, we have assigned IP addresses to its interfaces, right? But wait a minute, what is the meaning of layer 3 device? The meaning is that the router works at layer 3 or network layer of TCP IP model. This layer mainly deals with routing of packets based on IP address. Hence, we call a router a layer 3 device. Now the question arises: do routers only work at layer 3? And the answer is no. Routers operate and understand layer 1, layer 2, and also the layer 3 of TCP IP model. So if this is the case, why we call a router as a layer 3 device? Strange, right? And the answer is that we call a router a layer 3 device because typically it can deal maximum till layer 3. This means it can operate at layer 3, layer 2, and the layer 1. On the other hand, the switch here, this one, is a layer 2 device because it can deal till layer 2. The important thing to note here is that this host or laptop can operate and deals with any layer of TCP IP model. Hence, it understands all the layers of TCP IP model that is from physical to application. So let's go back to our initial conversation that a router is a layer 3 device and we need to assign an IP address to its interface. This interface or 0 slash 1 is connected to 192.168.10.0 network. Hence, we need to assign it an IP address from this network. Let's say we have assigned a first IP address from this subnet, which is 192.168.10.1, correct? This interface MAC address is C colon C colon C. Similarly, the IP address of 0 slash 2 interface is 192.168.20.1 and its MAC address is D colon D colon D. It is interesting to know that what happens inside a router when you configure an IP address on its interface. So let's discuss it. When you configure an IP address on a router's interface, router starts filling its routing table. So here you have the routing table, this one. Okay, let's fill it. Hypothetically, a routing table consists of a route type, which means how a route is learnt, a network and a mask, and finally, how to reach that network, which means exit interface or next hop. For example, when you configure IP address 192.168.10.1/24 on 0 slash 1 interface of this router, it will immediately install an entry into its routing table. That network 192.168.10.0/24 is directly connected over its 0 slash 1 interface. So here in route type 
column it will write the route 192.168.10.0 is directly connected or connected right here in the second column we can write subnet and mask of the route which is 192.168.10.0 slash 24 and here in this column we can write exit interface as 0 slash 1 i believe you understood this entry right very simple similarly for the second route we can write connected here 192.168.20.0 slash 24 here in the second column and in exit interface column field we can write 0 slash 2 right the meaning of this entry is that the route 192.168.20.0/24 is directly connected over 0/2 interface got the point yep a router forwards an ip packet based on destination ip address right and you also know that network 192.168.10.0 contains 253 hosts from 192.168.10.0 10.1 to dot 254 this means whenever this router sees a packet with a destination address of any of the 253 hosts it will forward the packet out of its 0 slash 1 interface correct this is simple routing guys believe me routing is this much simple a packet arrives on router interface router checks its destination ip address finds an entry in routing table and forwards the packet on matched interface that is it now let's do a layer 3 packet walk are you with me yep here host a initiates a ping towards host b let's understand what happens behind the scenes host a first checks whether host b is in its own network or not by looking at the network mask configuration it comes to know that host b is in a different network if you don't understand my last statement please see the second video of this series as the destination is not in the same subnet host a cannot send r request directly to host b right host a creates a ping packet here this one with the source address of 192.168.10.10 and destination address of 192.168.20.20 but before sending this packet out of this ethernet port this one here this host must fill the contents of layer 2 frame this one here shown in green color the source mac address will be a colon a colon a so we have the problem here we do not know the mac address of the destination we have another problem also that the destination host is not in our own network hence there is no point of sending our packet directly to host b because a router doesn't forward broadcast our packets so what will this host do to resolve this issue when host a finds out that the destination is not in the same subnet or network it sends a packet to someone which knows how to forward the packet to host b right that someone or device is known as default gateway or default router but this host doesn't know about its default gateway hence we need to configure the default gateway at the host a we configure the default gateway for host a as 192.168.10.1 and yes correct this is the ip address of 0 slash 1 interface of the router this interface here you would be wondering that you have never ever configured the default gateway on your pc or laptop right but still everything works fine so to let you know that this is the job of dhcp or dynamic host configuration protocol which assigns the ip address and default gateway to your pc DHCP is a different topic at all and we can discuss it in some other video. Let's see what happens next. Now we know that to send this ping packet to host B, we need to send it first towards the default gateway. Hence, host A starts completing this packet here. Source MAC address would be A colon, A colon, 
A. Can you guys tell me what would be the destination MAC address? The destination MAC address would be the MAC address of 0 slash 1 interface of the router or default router here, correct? Because the packets from host A to host B needs to be first reach here, right? But this host only knows the IP address of default gateway or this router. How would it know the MAC address? Yes, you got it right, guys. It will use our to know the MAC address of default gateway. Here is our R packet in yellow color. Sender MAC of this R packet is going to be A colon A colon A. Sender IP would be 192.168.10.10. Target MAC would be all zeros and target IP would be 192.168.10.1. Important thing to note here is that the target IP in R packet would be the IP address of the default router and not the IP address of the host B. This is interesting, correct? And this is how TCP IP works. Host A will first send this yellow R packet out of this Ethernet link, this one. To send this R broadcast, this host will set the source MAC address as A colon, A colon, A and destination MAC address as F colon, F colon, F, which is the broadcast address. This little yellow packet is same as this bigger yellow R packet, right? Switch will forward this packet on all the ports except the one on which it was received. R packet will reach to this router here. This router will remove the outer frame shown in green color and looks into the R packet. Inside the R packet, it sees its own IP address as target IP address. Hence, this router will send the R reply towards host A, which is a unicast packet. Through R reply, host A comes to know about MAC address of 0 slash 1 interface of the router and now it can complete this frame. This one here. Correct? It will write C colon C colon C in destination MAC address field and put the frame onto the Ethernet wire towards the switch. I believe you know all these in advance if you have seen the third video of the series. If not, I would request you to pause the video and have a look at the third video of this series. Another important point to note here is that pink packet source and destination address will be the same and it will never change. So it will see that the destination MAC address is C colon C colon C and forwards the frame on its 0 slash 2 interface. This one here, correct? Now the frame reaches to router. Router will remove its outer or layer 2 header and check the contents of IP ping packet. As you guys already know, router forwards the packet based on the destination IP address. The destination IP address of the packet I just received is 192.168.20.20. It will look into the routing table here, this one, and found that entry number two, this one, is the match. As you can see that 192.168.20.0 slash 24 network is connected on 0 slash 2 interface and the IP address 192.168.20.20 is part of this network. This packet will be forwarded over 0 slash 2 interface here, this one. But guys, do you see a problem here? To forward this IP packet over this Ethernet wire, this one, router needs to recreate the layer 2 frame. So here is the recreated frame. This is the IP ping packet in orange, this one. This is our old ping packet, right? And the source and destination IP address of the ping packet will not change. You can see the frame in green color here. The source MAC address of the frame will be D colon D colon D or the MAC address of 0 slash 2 interface of the router. It doesn't know the MAC address of host B. Once again, the frame is not complete and cannot be forwarded. So what will this router do? Yes, correct. It will keep the IP ping packet into its memory and generates an R broadcast to resolve MAC address of host B. Yes, you heard it correctly. A router doesn't forward an R broadcast message from one network to another network, but it could generate an R broadcast message to find out the MAC address of the destination. Hence, this router will generate an R broadcast packet and forwards it towards the switch. 
I'm not showing the arc message once again here as this board will become cluttery, but I am sure you got the point here. Switch will broadcast the art message and it will reach to host B. Host B creates an art reply and sends it back to the router. Now this router can complete the packet, this one, right? Which was stored in its memory because now it knows from the art reply message that the MAC address of the destination host B is B colon, B colon, B. So it will write B colon, B colon B here in the packet and forwards the frame towards the switch. Switch consults its cam table to know that the host B is attached to 0 slash 2 interface and forwards the packet over it. Eventually, this frame reaches at host B. Till now, we are able to send the packet from host A to host B. Host B will follow the similar steps to send the ping reply back to host A. Isn't the whole process or this layer 3 packet walk amazing? Right, guys? One another important thing to note here is that when packet moves from host A to host B, the source and destination IP address remains exactly same. On the other hand, MAC addresses get changed at every layer 3 hop. Correct? In a nutshell, the job of a router is when it receives a frame destined to it, it will remove the layer 2 header to fetch out the IP packet. It then consults its routing table to know at which interface it needs to forward the packet. Once it finds out the outgoing interface, it again slaps the Ethernet header and forwards the packet on outgoing interface. Correct? I really enjoyed explaining how two computers can talk when they are in different networks. In this video, we have learned the concepts that involves how a router works, right? In next video, we are going to discuss the fourth question of the series, which is how would you avoid layer two loops? I hope you have enjoyed this video. See you in next one.